Amtrak's Auto Train is a fun and unique way to travel between the northeastern United States and Florida. This is the only train in the Amtrak system to provide passengers with the option of bringing a personal vehicle on board. There are only two stations on the Auto Train's route, the end terminals of Lorton, Virginia, located on the southern outskirts of Washington, D.C., and Sanford, Florida, which is just to the north of Orlando. The only scheduled intermediate stop for the train is in Florence, South Carolina for a train crew change. In the spring of 2019, while on a trip to Florida, I was invited by Amtrak's social media department to travel on board the auto train from Sanford, Florida to Lorton, Virginia and return to work with them on a special video project for Amtrak's 48th anniversary. This seemed like the perfect opportunity for me to show what it's like to ride on board one of Amtrak's premier long-distance trains. So sit right back and enjoy the ride as we travel from Sanford to Lorton and return on board the auto train. I arrived at the Sanford Loading Terminal just after 1 p.m. to begin my auto train adventure. There was already a long line of cars waiting to get in. Sanford is the main maintenance facility for the auto train and all of the day-to-day -day repairs on the locomotives and cars are done here. Amtrak also does some maintenance work for Orlando, Florida's Sunrail commuter train. After checking in at the gate and walking into the beautiful station building, I was escorted around the Sanford Terminal by Amtrak to capture photos of the facility as well as some photos of the interior of the train prior to the scheduled boarding time. We will take a more in-depth look at the vehicle loading and unloading process in Lorton. Passenger boarding began at 2 p.m. sharp. This afternoon's departure would be completely full with many travelers from the Northeast returning home after a spring vacation down in Florida. After grabbing a few more stills of the train from the boarding platform, I stepped back on board. Just before 4 p.m., we departed Sanford. Since the last vehicles are accepted on the auto train at 2.30 p.m., the train can depart as soon as boarding has completed. As a result, the auto train will frequently leave a little early from its points of origin. Immediately after departing Sanford, the train rolls past the Sunrail Sanford Commuter Station. Shortly thereafter, we'd cross over the St. John's River. Other than a brief stretch of track out of Sanford that is owned by the state of Florida, the rail lines we would be traveling over on our journey to Lorden are owned by CSX Transportation. The auto train continued north through Florida, passing by several small towns as we headed toward Jacksonville. Auto train is the longest regularly scheduled passenger train in the world, frequently reaching 50 rail cars or more in length. That's over four-fifths of a mile. This particular train was 50 cars in length, 17 of which were passenger cars, with the remaining 33 cars being bi-level vehicle carriers, often called auto racks. The passenger cars on the train are bi-level cars known as superliners. Amtrak's auto train runs once a day in each direction, traveling a distance of 855 miles. The train is scheduled to leave both end terminals at 4 p.m., arriving just minutes before 9 a.m. the next morning at the other end of the line. This was a full train with over 320 vehicles and 550 people on board. There would be three dinner seatings in the dining car at 5 p.m., 7 p.m., and 9 p.m. to accommodate all of the passengers. I was given a 9 p.m. dinner ticket, which gave me the opportunity to explore the train for a little while. The auto train is divided into two sections. The first section on our train was the sleeping car section, and the second was the coach section. Each section has a separate dining car and lounge. For sleeping car passengers, a sightseer lounge car is typically used, which provides for some great viewing opportunities of scenery as the train passes by. There is also a cafe section on the lower level of the lounge where you can get various snacks and beverages. After enjoying the sights for a few minutes, I returned to my room. There are three different sleeping car room types to choose from. Roomettes, 
family bedrooms, and deluxe bedrooms. Roomettes feature a bunk bed that converts into two seats that face each other for travel during the daytime. Family bedrooms feature a bench seat for three plus an additional standalone seat that converts into four bunk beds. The deluxe bedrooms feature a similar bench seat with an extra separate seat set up that converts into a two-person bunk, but they also have their own restroom, sink, and shower inside the sleeping compartment. We will take a closer look at one of the deluxe rooms on the return trip from Lorton. Showers and restrooms for roomette passengers and the family bedroom are located on the lower level of each sleeping car. Most of the sleeping cars are divided into two sections on the upper level. Half of the level contains deluxe bedrooms and the other half features roomettes. The lower level has more roomettes and a family bedroom like the one I am staying in. Two and a half hours into our journey, we reach the outskirts of Jacksonville and roll over the Ortega River. Jacksonville is the largest city in Florida with a population of nearly 900,000. Interestingly enough, it is also the largest city by area in the contiguous United States. As we approach the massive freight yard in Jacksonville, we come to a well-known horseshoe curve making for an interesting view of the rest of the train out the window. Jacksonville is a station stop for Amtrak's Silver Meteor and Silver Star, which also run along portions of this rail corridor. The auto train, however, makes no intermediate station stops for passengers, so we continue to roll right on through. It won't be long before we'd cross into Georgia. With the sun inching closer to the horizon, we pass through the small town of Folkestone, Georgia. Folkestone is a well-known spot for railroad enthusiasts to watch trains passing by, featuring a rail fan train viewing platform similar to the one that is located in Rochelle, Illinois. As we continued our journey north, I enjoyed watching the setting sun through the trees. Around 8 p.m., the car attendant came by to transform my room from a sitting area into a bedroom. Shortly after, I went off to the dining car for a late dinner, and then it was off to bed. During the night, the auto train would pass through South Carolina, making its one and only scheduled stop in Florence for a locomotive crew change. After departing Florence, the train would continue north, traveling through North Carolina and into Virginia. I was greeted the next morning by a mix of thick clouds and sunlight as the sun made an attempt to break through. We were well into Virginia and only about an hour out from Lorton. This last segment of the trip would take us along the banks of the Potomac as we entered the Washington DC metro area.
luggage racks, and in your accommodations to ensure you have everything with you before you exit the train. Again, this is Guanaco Marine Corps Base. We're 20 minutes from the station. Very nice run last night, no delays. Uh, we have planning time in our schedule, which we didn't have to use, because we had a very nice, smooth trip. So, uh, 20 minutes to go, barring any last-minute unexpected delays. Thank you. Your ticket folder, please take a moment and look at that number. Be aware of it so that when you hear it, you can identify, claim your automobile, and be on your way. Uh, for those of you that have not been here for the Lorton Station, we sit right on Interstate 95. Can't get any easy Before I knew it, we were arriving at Lorton almost a half hour early. The train came to a stop before reaching the boarding platform, and the auto rack cars were detached from the end of the train by another locomotive. The switching crew would then break the auto racks into shorter strings so they could be unloaded simultaneously, greatly speeding up the vehicle unloading process. With the auto racks uncoupled, we pulled up to the platform where I was once again escorted around the facility. The Amtrak yard crew had wasted no time in breaking the vehicle carriers into sections as they began the unloading process. Even on a busy day, the yard crew can get the train unloaded in little more than an hour. Each vehicle is given a large magnetic number that is applied to the side doors when it is dropped off. As vehicles are unloaded, they are driven up to the front portico of the station where they are reclaimed by their owners. For an additional fee, Amtrak offers priority unloading. This will guarantee that your vehicle is one of the first 30 to be unloaded. The auto train accepts all sorts of different vehicles and even trailers and motorcycles, but there are certain clearance requirements. Be sure to check both Amtrak's website for restrictions as well as your vehicle for proper clearance if you are planning on taking the auto train. I took a brief break from watching the vehicle unloading to see the switch locomotive moving some more auto racks around the yard. Locomotive 508 is a P32-BWH type built by General Electric in 1991 for Amtrak. These locomotives were originally used on long distance and corridor trains in the western United States and out of Chicago. While they aren't seen in revenue passenger service too much these days, they are still hard at work as switch locomotives in yards all over the Amtrak system. I took a break from watching the yard operations to meet up with the Amtrak social media team. After we were done, I walked across the street for some lunch and then back to the Lorton station. By the time I had returned, the locomotives that pulled my train up the previous night had been moved to the other end of the passenger car set for the return trip to Florida. These are General Electric P40 DC locomotives built in 1993. A group of several of these locomotives is kept in permanent auto train service. These units rarely travel to other parts of the Amtrak system, and it is just as rare for other Amtrak locomotives to be used on the auto train. I walked back over toward the station building. The front of the Lorton station is beautifully landscaped with trees, grass, some benches, and a play area for kids. The Lorton terminal is quite convenient for travelers being located just 15 miles from Washington, D.C. This particular structure was built in 2000 to replace the original station. My return trip would be significantly less crowded with most of the spring break traveling done for the season. It wasn't long before I was boarding the train and we were getting ready to leave Lorton. Once again, the train departed right on time, in fact a minute or two early. After pulling to the south end of the yard, the vehicle carriers were attached to the end of the train and we were on our way, passing once again along the Potomac River on our journey southbound. In the dining car, tables were already being set for dinner. For the return trip, I had one of the deluxe bedrooms and, as promised, here is a view of the interior. The sun was starting to break through the clouds, so I decided to walk down to the lounge car to enjoy the views as we left the Washington, D.C. metro area behind. The 
The Auto Train is not only a unique long distance train in the Amtrak system, it also has a very unique history. Auto Train began as a privately operated passenger service run by a company called Auto Train Corporation. The service started in December of 1971, just months after the U.S. government created Amtrak. While the initial route between Sanford and Lorton was moderately successful, the company overexpanded to a second route that was not very well suited for passenger rail. In 1981, the company went out of business. Just two years later, in 1983, Amtrak purchased the terminals at Lorton and Sanford and restarted service on a tri-weekly and shortly thereafter daily basis. Today, Autotrain is one of Amtrak's premier trains with approximately a quarter million riders each year. I had an early 5 o'clock dinner ticket on the return trip, and before I knew it, I was off to the dining car for the 5 p.m. seating. Hey everyone, so we're just rolling south here through, uh, just south of Richmond, Virginia right now. I just came back from dinner. I got the lasagna. It was actually really good. Um, probably going to go to the lounge car in a few minutes and look at some more sights before sunset, and then it's off to bed. and down to Florida, so we'll see you soon. After a bit of sightseeing in the lounge, I returned to my room to find my bed already turned down and ready for the night ahead. I decided to enjoy the sights and sounds as we passed through towns on our southbound journey before finally calling it a night. I awoke the next morning to find the train already south of Jacksonville and moving along at a decent clip. We would be in Sanford in no time at all. In the dining car, passengers were enjoying a light continental breakfast. I continued through to the lounge car. I was up early enough that I had the lounge car all to myself for a while. As rain started to fall, I was very glad to be on board the train rather than driving on the wet roads.
On a much sunnier day, we see the auto train from the outside as it passes through DeLand, Florida. Back on board, we pass by the DeLand Depot, currently served by Amtrak's Silver Meteor and Silver Star. As we neared Sanford, I returned to my room for the last time. Please sit down for safety reasons. Once again, when the power is down, I ask that you please sit down. We may feel a slight bump during this process, so we don't want anyone to fall down. Once this has been completed, the train will move further down the tracks. We will make the second stop. And just like that, we were pulling into Sanford at 9 a.m., bringing my trip aboard the auto train to an end. Hey everyone, thanks again for joining me on my trip aboard Amtrak's auto train. A big thank you to Nicole, the social media team, and everyone else at Amtrak for making this happen. Especially, I'd like to thank all the staff at Lorton and Sanford and everyone on board the train, as well as Cindy and Keith. Thank you so much, you run a first class operation all the way. Also, be sure to check out the 48th anniversary video I did with Amtrak if you haven't already seen it. I'll provide links in the description. If you like this video and want to see me do more videos like this in the future, be sure to give this video a like and leave a comment below. And finally, if you've never done it, I highly recommend taking the auto train if you're ever traveling between the Northeast and Florida and want to bring your vehicle. This was my first overnight train ride, and it really was an excellent experience. There's something that's just so relaxing about riding on the train and feeling the car rocking back and forth and watching the world go by, and you don't have to deal with driving in traffic on I-95. The schedule for the train is also really great, too, because you leave in the afternoon, and by the time you wake up the next morning, you've gone nearly a thousand miles all the way to your destination. And the auto train is almost always on time. So overall, just a great experience and I definitely recommend it. Well, that's it for now. Until next time, I'm Mike Armstrong. I'll see you down the line. Thanks for watching.